The views and opinions of this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at Market Talk Egg and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube. Well, as we take a look at Monday's market action, the wheat trade found the most support of the day, a little bit higher in corn. Soybeans were just slightly below unchanged in beans and, and bean meal, while the livestock markets were kind of mixed. Let's talk about it and get a look at the early week trade. Joining us now, John Heimberg with Total Farm Marketing. John, good to catch up with you here again. On, on one hand, my X feed is looking at NFL free agency opening on Monday, and the other side is looking at what's happening in the markets and a little bit of a uh, little bit of action in the uh, in the grain markets. Like I mentioned, wheat was was pretty solid Monday. Uh, corn, though, you you told me this before we jumped on the air. You really like the corn market on Monday, so let's uh, let's start there. Talk about what you saw on somewhat of a quiet day in corn, but a little bit higher, John. Yeah, well, you know, the corn market, I want to make sure you're clear. I, I like where we're doing at this time frame. Still not overly bullish to the market at this frame. But, okay. you know, we, we got to a point that, you know, when we got so low there, it, just, it was a window where we needed to maybe get some premium working on the other side of the, of the coin and look at some call strategies. Again, I, I mentioned this in the past here with us, uh, too, looking at some of those longer range forecasts for South America. You know, obviously the wheat move today, kind of off those lows, that helps support corn. But then you heard also the Brazilian corn market rally today. And we're looking at a pretty good size heat ridge coming in this weekend. Temperatures pushing the 100 degree plus level in the central plains. Yes, moisture is adequate in terms of they're getting some rains now, but the soil moisture levels are still extremely dry. So things need to be timely. So that's something we got to keep an eye on for that second crop, you know, corn out of Brazil. You know, we're getting to the 90 plus percent planted windows. The crop's in the ground now. Now they're going to need the rains and those rains are going to need to stay on task in terms of keeping that crop going along. So there's a spot in here. We had a market that was so depressed that we could add a little bit of weather premium in. And I think that was, you know, could be a case here. Nice close today. I'm looking at some of the technicals. You got that 10 day, 10 day moving average, trying to cross through the, the, those next moving averages. That could be a little bit of a buy signal. The funds are kind of working out of their short position, even though they're pretty much sideways last week. But then I think they obviously took some off, you know, with the strength of the end of the week there this week so far before those numbers get reported tomorrow. So there are some things I like in the core market that at this time frame, how do we handle it? You stay optimistic as a seller. You know, opportunistic, I guess is the better word, not optimistic. Mm -hmm. Opportunistic as a seller, set some targets, let it hit, let that corn move. Take a look at some of those longer range calls. I like September, get out into the summer months, you know, get a good look at that South American crop and keep your upside potential there. But, you know, now we're looking at, what, a 408 low, now we're 441 in the May. That's a pretty heck of a pretty good rally on a heavy supply year. There's still a lot of bushels that need to move out there. So again, like as a producer, you take advantage of some of these windows and make sure we're moving some grain, find a way to reown the potential, you know, looking at calls, call spreads, something of that nature, and get some time on them so we can get through this heavy front end supply and maybe see some things down the road. So that's something I've been kind of working on. No, and that's uh, I'm glad you framed that all up for us. I think a lot of folks are looking for answers in the corn market right now. So maybe some things to take a closer look at here through this window. And to your point, you know, get into the summer months, get a better look at South America. If there ends up being some sort of a weather rally here in the U.S. too, I mean, things like that to really take a look at with corn and, and wheat as well. Like you mentioned, kind of lended support on Monday. We got more SRW cancellations by China. There's rumors that we're going to see maybe another two to three cargoes yet to get announced, but it feels like the market largely kind of priced that in. Money flow felt pretty good really across the entire week complex on Monday, John. Yeah, it turned into a bit of a um, you know a bear trap this morning with that announcement again. You know, we had the hard push here a week and a half ago, or you know when the markets went to those broke through those lows the last time. You know, a lot of times these announcements are known by the traders before they hit the newswire. Uh, so I'm assuming that was the case that that was already priced in. Uh, some of the people later in the game, maybe the retail investor jumped on that news this morning thinking, hey, here goes more wheat, we're going to tank. And, and uh, realistically, the bullish side of the market took over. 
and uh, hung anybody that jumped in on the short side out to dry. So we'll have to see how this kind of plays out. I do think the weather is still in the Southern Plains is a big factor. You see that strength in the KC wheat up 13 cents here today. You know, those cancellations are SRW. That's Chicago wheat. So we're still seeing good strength in that KC. Again, watching the weather forecasts that are coming through. We'll see how they are. Again, just talking to producers in general. And mo again, most of my conversations are dealing with corn and soybean markets. And But, you know, got guys in Iowa that are just like, this thing is dry. You know, we were supposed to get some rain this week. And we got a tenth of an inch. Uh, so I think the market may be keeping a little bit of weather premium in that KC. Now we got some talk, maybe some cold air coming towards the end of March. We'll have to keep an eye on that. You know, how does that come into play again? So they're just putting some premium in. So, but it was a good, a very impressive move today. I've actually two days in a row now of trade where we put in reversals on that, on those Chicago charts or those wheat charts. We took out the previous day low, took out the, the high from that previous day. So those reversals just tell us there's some buying strength there. The, you know, we're still finding our price bottom now, but there's a lot of volatilities. We're still not out of the woods yet. Global wheat prices are still very, very high or very low compared to us. Uh, the, so those things are all coming into play. Uh, so we'll have to watch. But you got to like the money flow, at least in the wheat market here the last couple of sessions, just totally rejecting those lower opens and finishing with good strength. Well, let's move over to that soy complex. Uh, soybeans and meal, a little bit under pressure Monday, yet bean oil finding some support. Palm oil has been up five or six days. So that world veg oil market is looking somewhat strong here in this window but your thoughts in soybeans and I kind of pick it up what we've been talking about and what I've uh, talked to a lot of other folks about as well that, you know, there's a little, little more caution, I feel like, in this soybean complex. It's, you know, when are we going to break either lower or higher here and, and get out of this 11 window? I think that's what a lot of folks are still kind of keying on right now in soybeans, John. What about you? Yeah, we're still kind of watching. I mean, we still got to remember the number one thing that's a factor in the soybean market, and that is demand. And getting those export sales moving. We had a good week last week, and you know, six hundred thousand isn't a lot, but it is for this time of year in terms of the way things were trending. So that was encouraging to see. South American prices are coming up. We've seen a little bit more competition, at least in terms of like the inner processors versus the export market. You know, maybe that's a reflection of that tighter wind of supply down there that's coming out of this harvest. Harvest hit about fifty-five percent last week, according to one analyst group that I found information on. So the harvest is rolling along still at a fairly good clip overall. So with that, that keeps you a little bit optimistic beans that maybe we're getting past that bulk of the beans that need to hit the marketplace. But still at the same time, there's still a solid gap between U.S. prices and Brazilian prices in terms of the export market. And, you know, there's still a concern to me out there. The USDA will more likely make a soybean demand adjustment. Uh, we'll have to watch that. Now, soybeans, obviously, you know, we had a big reaction on Friday. You know, the little sleeper in that report on Friday that, you know, some people may have missed was the Chinese numbers and what the USDA did there. Going back, adjusting those demand factors, as well as the carry-in numbers for the world supplies based off Chinese, improved Chinese uh, domestic usage them bumping up the export number by 2 million metric tons to 105 for the year. That was enough on a Friday with a short, heavy short market to get a good short covering rally. A little disappointing we couldn't get some follow through today. A lot of resistance around 1180 on May. You know, July beans popped to the $12 mark or just short of that today and turned around. So maybe we've gotten rich enough here that, you know, the market says we need to still move these things. We can't really rally them too heavy unless there's truly some type of a story that's brewing. And I don't see that in the bean market, unlike what we were talking about with that weather could be impacting that second crop corn. Well, you mentioned that China number too. And uh, I've had some folks kind of, you know, throw this out at me that, you know, typically the second half of the marketing year is not a prime time for soybean movement. But one has to wonder if maybe we see some late movement of soybeans to China in this window, if they want to step back into the U.S. soybean market, Maybe now that they've satisfied a lot of what they've wanted from South America or you know, whatever the case may be, I, I don't know. I, I guess that's something that got me thinking a little bit in this window here, John, is you know, will China really step back into the U.S. soybean market here in the second half of this marketing year? You know, that's one thing I've been talking about with clients, too, and I mentioned it in a few other interviews. If we truly have a short crop in Brazil, that's not going to impact things now. 
that's going to impact things in that August, September, October window because you're going to see those Brazilian exports dry up. They've got enough internal competition for those beans for their own crush, their own feed usage, things of that nature, that all of a sudden China is going to need beans come this fall and they may turn back to the United States for that. And that's why, too, again, when we talk about summer calls, get things out there over top of this market, get the time to it, because that's when we're going to see things really kick in. Same thing even in the corn side. If the safrina crop is struggling, that's not going to help us now. That's going to help us in September, October, November, December, you know, where we see the world come back to the U.S. shores for corn. So again, you know, when you do the re-ownership strategies, think about those longer term plays. Yeah, you got to pay a little more for time. But in the long run, that might be the better place to be than starting to deal with this heavy supply of stuff up front, whether it's beans with the South American beans competing with us or corn with the pile of corn that we've got to work through and get a, get a price on. You know, So that's one thing I keep thinking about as I talk to customers. Get some targets out there. Make them, if they're in new crop, we get sale targets. We hit those, make the sales, calls take over. Um, or if we've got already some sales on the books, let's get some re-ownership, maybe at cheaper levels, and you put some early sales in from last year uh, for this year's prices. So there's opportunity there. You just got to make sure you ask the right questions and find the right strategies. We are talking today with John Heimberg from Total Farm Marketing here on Market Talk. John, let's go over to the protein sector. Cattle hogs kind of turned lower on Monday, but largely feels like feels like this protein sector is going sideways right now. Kind of kind of put me to sleep a little bit here. I guess let's start with cattle. What's your thoughts uh, in both fats and feeders here to begin the week, John? Yeah, you know, realistically, Friday was not a very good close on the on the cattle market, especially the live on the lives and both groups. So, you know, we had a chance to possibly break this thing out in the front end cattle contracts on the lives, and we reversed it over and finished the day lower. Got a little follow through in the open today. Again, saw a little bit of buying strength, even though we finished negative. Now that's still in the news of 300 plus, 306, 305 choice carcasses and cash trade trading higher. So again, we're kind of with you. It feels like right now we've got ourselves into a sideways range. We hit the top of the range last week. Now we're going to go back and retest the bottom of the range. The key is that bottom of the range needs to hold, you know, in this regard. So a little cautious here. Again, it is that time of year, though. We, you know, we're just thinking, all right, we're through the winter, getting ready for spring. Forecasts look fairly friendly. Does that kick in a little extra grilling demand maybe early? You know, so it's a spot here. I think this market is taking a breath and we'll have to kind of watch it. So I'm neither bullish nor bearish. You know, I've got longer term positions. I, I have some ownership out there, especially if guys have moved some cattle. We've picked up some calls over top of this market just to keep the upside open. You know, I've also still been very active in talking about put strategies. Make sure we keep a, a safety valve floor underneath here. You know, if the sideways market stays in place, some of these puts are starting to come down. They're losing their, their volatility. So it's going to help a producer have a pretty dog and a good floor that we hope we're wrong with. And the market does kick in and throw another 10 bucks into it, you know, on the cash side for them. So, so uh, yeah, we're in a little bit of limbo land on both of the two charts. I'd say feeders look the more cautious right now. Uh, they could take a break and come back down, especially if we see some more strength in those cereal grains, such as corn and wheat. I do think that was a factor today. That just wouldn't allow the live cattle to run out was the fact that, you know, feeders put in triple digit losses, even though it was only a buck or so. It was still a fairly negative day there. And those charts do look technically a little bit weak. And it's interesting to watch some of the, the technicals on the feeder charts, John, because, I mean, that countryside demand, you know, still looking very strong. We saw it again last week that things at sale barns still looking pretty solid there on the feeder side, John. Yeah, there's still such a, a you know, indirect or direct relationship missing here then that's where the cash market is and where the futures market is that basis between the two is so wide and that makes it also very hard for producers to find a way to hedge those feeders because you know you're thinking 260 plus on cash or 270 on cash boards at 250 yeah let's go throw a put in well i'm 20 dollars away and it does cause them to play it makes it makes the spot a little bit harder uh but again that's one thing that's still out there it's one of the reasons i still stay optimistic the cattle market overall is just again just what we're seeing on that cash side and even you know we get reported cash and i have individual conversations with producers they're getting a little bit more than what's the reported cash so you know that's the same thing on the live cattle side too so there's still a lot of upward momentum i think that's could come into this cattle market i do think the economy 
the consumer, the demand side, those are things that are going to still be big questions that may make this market a little bit cautious. But I'm kind of curious when we get into that nice spring weather, let's get into the first of April, get through the grilling demand. Now we got Easter early, so we're thinking Easter time, you know, demand, which is typically not beef, you know, could be coming into play here. Uh, so we're looking toward, you know, then we'll look, see where that upside wants to go. If that momentum is still there, because the supply is still definitely the issue. On the hog side, John, uh, feels like our hog friends are maybe getting a little toppy here. Would you agree with that? What's your thoughts on hogs, John? You know, I felt that last week a little bit. Just look at that price action in April. A couple times we tried to run this out, reversed out of there today, breaking some support. So it feels like April's gotten a little rich, needs to catch up to the index, which is still a couple bucks lower. I'm still looking at those summer months. Now we're down today and we had a, a strong day at midday on retails, you know, up three bucks plus on those carcasses, you know, and the index was flat today. So again, maybe we've got ourselves a little out over our skis. We've had a heck of a run since January in these hog contracts. Definitely think you need to get some protection. If you got hogs for the summer, the hundred dollar plus level is still there. You know, put that floor in place. And again, like I say, with well, most time with puts, I hope we're wrong and the cattle, the hogs are up at those levels or higher. So, but again, you're seeing a pretty good rally here that probably merits some type of defense. Uh, a little nervous that maybe those June hogs break lower again tomorrow. And if they do, there's quite a bit of air into that market that we can see about a three or four dollar drop pretty quickly to the next level of support. John, great stuff as always. Final thoughts. What do you want folks to take home here? And uh, what do you want to reiterate to folks on today's show? You know, again, don't get greedy in the front end of this market with supplies. You know, stay, stay disciplined to targets, set your targets, find a way to shift the risk if there is a way to do that. You know, again, make those conversations known. Or if you're not going to make the sales, throw some cheap puts in here on the shorter term because they will at least protect that floor. You know, we're still a headline away from things turning over. You know, all of a sudden things just start rolling or we get a bean cancellation or we see somebody jump into the core market on the export side. You know, things will move very, very quickly. So, uh, again, as I say to guys, set those targets, reward the rally. We still got a lot of supply to get through on both corn and beans here in the front end. Well, John, if folks want to reach out and get some advice, want to ask questions uh, with you there at Total Farm Marketing, how can they get a hold of you, John? Sure. I'd love to chat with them. doesn't cost anything to pick up a phone and give me a call. Uh, phone number is 800-334-9779. Shoot me an email at John H at totalfarmmarketing.com. And don't forget that website of ours, totalfarmmarketing.com. Well, John, always appreciate it. Uh, let both of us get back to watching the NFL free agency news <laughs> on, uh, here uh, here today. Yeah, of course, our, our Packers signed Josh Jacobs, so I like that. So that's a good one to see. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Always appreciate it. We'll talk to you again next week. Sounds great. Have a good week, everybody. John Einberg there with Total Farm Marketing joining us here on Market Talk today. That's going to do it for the show. Find us at markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great rest of your day.